Dear friends, let us discuss about bioprocessing. In the last TPS activity, we have done the fermentation process, the other way what is called as upstream processing, where the product has been produced. And the next step is the entire process, what we call as a downstream processing. So here, uh, we had to separate out the product first. The product may be in the form of extracellular product or in the form of intracellular product. Means to say that the product will be within the cell or outside the cell. So for the products within the cell, we have to break the cell and take out the product, wherein we can follow the chemical disruption method, enzymatic disruption method, mechanical method, or physical method. So after the separation of product out of the cell, we had to go for the solid liquid separation for both intracellular as well as extracellular product, wherein we can follow the techniques like centrifugation technique, sedimentation technique, extraction technique, and filtration technique. So once the solid liquid separation is done, we have to concentrate the main product wherein we can follow the techniques like evaporation or ultrafiltration or adsorption or precipitation. Once the product is concentrated, we have to purify the product to remove the impurities from the product. So wherein we can follow a high iron techniques called chromatographic techniques. So wherein we can follow gel filtration, ion exchange chromatography, HPLC and many more. Once the purification is done, we have to go for the formulation of the product wherein we have to go with different techniques like crystallization or freeze drying or spray drying or sterile filtration or granulation. So whatever is required depending on the type of product we have to go for the formulation of product. Once the formulation is done, we can finally get the fine product that is the end product which is completely a finished purified formulated product so let us go with the overview of the fermentation process and the downstream processing technique so once the fermentation process done as we discussed in the previous slide we had to harvest the product the product may be either intracellular or extracellular Wherein if the product is intracellular, we have to go for the cell lysis to break down the cell and take out the cell content. And we have to recover the product from it. And again on the other hand, we can see here for the sieving process wherein we have to separate out the solids and liquids. Once the process is done, we have to go for the clarification wherein we have discussed as the concentration technique. We are going to follow the precipitation, depth filtration, ultrafiltration. So once the clarification is done, we have to go for the purification technique wherein we are going to follow the ultrafiltration technique, size resolution technique and chromatography techniques like gel chromatography and many more. Once the product is purified, we can go for polishing or we can go for the formulation thing, wherein we are going to make use of buffer exchange or any formulations like what we had discussed in the previous slide regarding the drying, crystallization and many more. Once it is once the formulation is done, it has to go for filling for the finished product. So this is a main overview for fermentation technology and downstream processing. So let us discuss about one of the product which we is produced through fermentation process and how to recover it. Let us go with an example: citric acid production. So citric acid is an industrially important product wherein it has been used very versatilely. It can be used as a source agent for jams, jellies, carbonated drinks, and it can also be used as ion sequestering agent buffer. So 93% of the product is produced by aerobic fermentation of corn sugar by the, uh, by the organism Aspergillus niger. The reaction changes the straight chain into a branch chains. As you can observe here, 12 atoms of carbon, 22 atoms of hydrogen, and 11 atoms of oxygen with water and 3 molecules of oxygen gives us C6H8O72 molecules with C6H8O7 with water. This is how the conversion process takes place from the straight chain to a branch chain. And uh, apart from that, submerged process can be broken down into various steps by the organism aspirationizer. So different techniques like unit operations and chemical conversion will be taken place. And uh, to proceed with, to start with, to produce for the production of citric acid, the culture strains from the test tube lands will be selected and they'll be inoculated and they'll be grown 
for the development of inoculum and it takes about 36 hours to 48 hours. Other organisms which have been used for the production of citric acid is Candida lipolytica apart from as well as Niger. We can, we can make use of it. And let us go with citric acid production with the entire flow sheet of the citric acid production. So let us start with the feed. So the feed will be dextrose glucose syrup wherein the organism Aspergillus niger is going to feed on it. So let us go with the number one. Number one is your inoculum which is developed by utilization of slant which has been grown for 30 to 48 hours. And look at this from a stretch from 2 to 8 wherein we can go with the purification of the dextrose syrup that is present in 2. It involves a rotary vacuum filter to remove the suspended or precipitated solids after the partial dilution and this process is followed by a cation exchange cell wherein we can remove the trace elements to reduce the trace elements we can make use of this 6 that is what we call as the cation exchange cell so once it is done it will be sent for it will be sent for the pasteurization heater wherein we can see the entire steps of 7 that is the heater and 7a is the holding loop and 8 is the cooling loop. so entire pasteurization process takes place with 7 7a and 8 once it is done the syrup is pumped into the fermenter so we can observe from 1 there will be an inoculum from 8 there will be a corn syrup glucose syrup which is after purification fine so in the 9 9 is your fermenter Fine, and you can observe 12 is the heat. Uh, 12 is the heating ja uh, steam jacket, and 10 is your agitator. 11 is the uh, 11 is the air which is getting in. Fine. So these are all the things we can see and look into it. So 10 is the sparger what we discussed. Once the fermentation process starts, we have to make sure that the pH is adjusted and the nut nutrients are added so with that we'll start with the fermentation process once that is done and look at the process wherein you can see the air which is passed into through the sparger for the entire process and once the process is done the fermentation for on the fermentation is done the conversion of molecule of exo sugar to a six carbon molecule of citric acid is done in this fermenter okay then once the fermentation process is done, at the purification recovery of the resultant acid has to be done. Wherein you can find the applications of many other equipments that is downstream equipments. The purification recovery of this acid is done by an application called lime sulfuric scheme. Which is other way called as the liming process. Wherein we have to remove the mycelials from the organism and that will be sent to the lime slurry separation fine wherein uh, wherein liming uh, process will take place with the milk of lime slurry within this agitation fine once the process is done again again that will be sent for washing into the rotary drum operator so the resultant uh, calcium citrate is filtered and again Finally, the decomposing uh, finally the decomposition of citric uh, citric acid will take place with the addition of sulfuric acid. Once the calcium sulfate is formed in this container, it is filtered up as a waste product using the two sets of the rotary drum operator. So wherein we can filter again the waste. The byproduct is removed. And further to this uh, uh, filtration process, we can make use of we can we can make use of uh, the ca granular carbon beds name numbered as 25 and 26 followed by the demineralizing beds uh, that is a cation and ion action beds 27 and 28 for the further separation ion action resins then there will be a triple effect operator double or triple effect operator that is 29 for uh, separation and this will be further sent to the separator crystallizer that is uh, 30 wherein you can see here fine and again after the separation it has to be centrifuged wherein you can find the pro 31 number and the mother liquid is again recycled it will be fed back 
it will be fed it will be fed back into again the climbing process okay and again a part of it you can observe again it will be sent for again it is sent for the carbon cells okay the damp citric acid crystals are again remelted you can observe here and it is vacuum crystallized and this is again followed by a centrifugation technique once the centrifugation is done the final step is the drying process and the last step is the finishing product where is the size classification is done again the final packing is done where you can expect the end product so the degree of purity of the initial sugar source going into the fermentation can be a factor in determining the amount of purification necessary and the need for recycling the final product so that's all about citric acid production i hope you have understood regarding the fermentation process and downstream processing for the purified citric acid thank you